Okay, so we agreed to do a deal yesterday to buy a bungalow up in Chester, £148,000. And we need to raise the money by next Friday for completion. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. So we needed a exchange and completion on the same day. We need to raise all the money. Now, in my head, first things first, always go towards a deal as if you've got no money. So how do you acquire that without having access to any capital at all? That's always, in my mind, the first... Uh, first point of call, right? So we have got access to capital ourselves in our own, you know, accounts, but we could either go to bridging, private finance or mortgage. Well, obviously mortgage is out the equation because it needs to be done within seven days. Uh, bridging loan, still very tight. Seven days is a very tight time schedule. And obviously we've got our own money and private investor capital. So we've put the feelers out over the last 24 hours and this is what we come up with. So if we'd have gone for... Um, the whole lot, we could have got 148,000 um, and secured that as a first charge. Um, or we could use a multiple, two different strategies, which is essentially what we ended up doing. We went and got 110,000 from a bridger. And when I say bridger, I use that term very lightly because he's a very wealthy guy who set up an entity to lend money out, not lending it from him personally, but lending it from his entity. That comes under a bridging company. We direct to the owner of the company, AKA the, the wealthy guy. Um, so although I put bridging loan, it's actually just a, very, a wealthy private investor that's lending us the money. And he's lending us that at 2% per annum, uh, sorry, 2% per month, I wish it was per annum. 2% per month, which is 24% per annum. So for a lot of people now, they go, oh, that's really expensive money. Yes, granted, it is in uh, the vast majority of cases. However, there's no entry fee. There's no exit fee, which very often there is on bridging loans. And there also is on mortgages as well. Watch the video I put out two or three days ago uh, where I explained that. Um, and there's no minimum term. So if we paid that back in two months, there'd be no, no exit fee again. Uh, if we paid it back in six months, there's no exit fee, right? So we have took this one out for six months, the, the, the length of the term, um, but we only expect to hold it for probably four months because um, we're gonna put it back into auction. So in terms of the deal now, if we'd have gone to a mortgage lender, we wouldn't have been able to raise the money in time. A private investor and a bridger, this is sort of what's going on here. So where's the rest of the money coming from? So there's another 38,000 plus a few fees. We're putting that in ourselves. So let's, let's call that 40 grand for the sake of round figures. 40 grand uh, plus the 110, that gets you to the 150. And that there is how we're buying the bungalow. We're going to clear out the place because it's an absolute dump. Uh, we're going to cut back the gardens and make that look all snazzy. And then we're going to flip it into auction, expecting the sale price of around 180. So we should, everything's easy said in theory, we should really walk away with around, I don't know, 23 to say 25,000 pound in profit in four months off that one deal. Uh, and although we do go into these deals without putting our own capital into them, um, we are going to put 38,000. Although some of that, in all fairness, has come from an investor as well. So um, it's, it is an our money down and it also isn't an our money down as well. Any questions that I've missed there? I guess just to touch on a second exit, if this is an exit, it doesn't uh, materialise. Yeah, so second exit, good question. Um, there's about a 40 grand refurb on it, yeah? So for any person who's going to be buying this in the auction room, um, there's going to be, let's say they buy it and spend 40 grand on it. So they could buy it for 180, spend 40 on it. It's worth about 250 once it's done up. So if we had to, we've paid 148 for the property. If we had to, we could spend 40 on it, you up to say 190 and we'd sell it for the 250. So there's still 50 grand margin in it if we decided to do the work ourselves. That's a secondary exit. And we'll come to that decision. If it doesn't sell in auction at the price we needed to get to, we'll do that then. 
and then we'll get off the bridge by refinancing it onto either another bridger, a buy to let mortgage, whatever we need to do. Cover everything? Yeah, I think so. Maybe the only other potential exit is to source it on again. Obviously, we've done an element of the refurb work while it's making the whole age and dropping back all the wiring. Uh, so the refurb costs are down. Obviously, we're cutting in to the DUV a little bit because we're then going to sell it for more than about four or eight hundred pounds. So yeah, we could source this on as well. Couldn't we? Yeah, it could do. Margins I'll... aren't particularly, you know, fantastic. But if you're a builder, you do a lot of work yourself. You could still make this work. Make so I mean, a twenty percent margin. Yeah, because we're not builders. But there's a twenty percent cut for the builders on top of that. That obviously we have to account for, but if a builder went in and did that, they could knock 20 to 30% off that fairly comfortably. Yeah. Cool. The only economy you need to be concerned about is your own economy. The world economy, you have very little control over, if any at all. The country that you live in, you can't control that. But what you can control is how you act proactively, reactively to the world around you. So if you set your KPIs, for example, in my industry, I put at least 10 offers out a week, knowing that on average I land one out of every 10 that I offer. If I continue to do that, regardless of the economy that I'm in, regardless of the industry that you're in, if you do the, the habits that you set for yourself and continue to do them, Regardless of the outlook of the world, I mean, if you put the news on, everything's negative. The, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. The economy has been collapsing, booming, collapsing, booming. It's never just been normal if you put the news on. And that's the way that it's set up, right? People are addicted to juice. They're addicted to drama. And so... If you can be that center point, that equilibrium point, and focus on what you're doing, your economy, and when I say your economy, your financial economy, but also, you know, what you put out in the digital sphere. If you can keep building trust and doing what you need to do out there in, on the digital sphere, in the real world, then, you're taking full ownership, full responsibility for your life, regardless of what's going out in the world. And in the property investment game, it's quite difficult for people to comprehend, but the, the bad economies are very often the best economies to build wealth in because you can pick up assets for cheap. We can do that in any economy. You can do that if, when the market's booming. You can do that when the market's on its backside. So that's, it's an irrelevancy. Just keep doing what you're doing. Do the good things over and over and over again. Don't concern yourself what's going on out there. Or at least separate yourself from it and be objective to it as, as objective as you possibly can be. Because once you get consumed by it, you can fall into despair or, or uh, you can be overly optimistic about stuff. Things are never as good or things are never as bad as what they seem.